Hello everybody, welcome to Crafty Soup. My name is Misty. I just want to say first up, my audio sounds a little odd today. It's because I'm sitting at a picnic table next to a lawn where my daughter is doing a juggling event. So my audio plus the sounds of the juggling might be different than what is usual for me. At any rate, if you're new here, welcome. I am participating in this mixed media mayhem hop for the final Friday of the month. With our layout inspiration there, we always scrap lift that layout and get our mixed media on. So let's dive in. All right. I really, really like this um, inspiration layout. In fact, I've done something very similar in the past and I will link you up in the corner to that as well as in the show notes in case you're interested in seeing more of this style of mixed media, which I'm going to replicate. Now I'm going to tell a story of my daughter's play from 2022 um, and this is part of a series so I want to be sure to carry over the color scheme that I've started. Um, which happens to be a similar colors that are in the inspiration as well. So that uh, works out nicely. And I'm going to be a two step mixed media with this gold paste, which actually has dried out at this point. But I find that if I just spray it with water, I can rehydrate it enough to make it work for what I want. And I'm going to just mush this through my star stencil, which of course I'm going to use since this was a school play. And she is my superstar, so that is why I've got the star theme going on. And I will add more water to that as it dries out, which it does. I want to be careful because I am using a sponge dauber. Adding too much water can be a problem because if the sponge soaks up that water, um, it'll squish back out again when I'm running through my stencil and then it'll seep under the stencil. So I want to be sure not to do that. At any rate, I will finish up this stenciling here and then we will move on to part two of course, after this dries. <laughs> All right, I'm cleaning up my stencil and I gave that a hit with my heat gun so that I could speed up the dry time. And now we're going to work on the paste part of this stenciling. And this is a clear gel medium from Liquitex. And I am liking this one a lot right now. I've used it a couple of times recently. And so I'll link you up to those videos too, if you're interested. So I am just going to use a little spatula to uh, apply some to my stencil and then this scraper to um, get it evenly across all of the nooks and crannies of the stencil. And what's nice about this particular stencil, oh, here's a little bit of a close up. I did get a smudge on the bottom, but that's not a big deal because that will be covered up with a lot of the paper layers. So I just wipe it up and continue on. Um, what's nice, what was I saying? What's nice about this stencil is that um, it is easy to kind of move the edge over and keep going with enough of a continuous pattern. So that is part of the reason why I chose this star stencil over a couple of others in my stash. Now I had extra paste, so I'm just gonna smear a lot of that extra on my layout for just even more texture. And I did run that down through the center, like in the sketch. Now I found the colors of other pastes that I'd used in previous layouts, and I used those to kind of help guide me choosing some scrap papers for my stash so that I could do those paper layers. I went to my kids section of my um, themes and tried to find some uh, theater-based products, which there's not a lot out there on the market. So I have a few things. Um, a little uh, pack of embellishment, like layered embellishment stickers, and then some Tracy Reed things, as well as just some general teen themed products. So we'll see how all of that comes together. I did go to my ticket and tab bin because I know I want to, and, and I also have my um, die set there for the tags. So I'm going to want to include some tickets and some tags because the tags are on the sketch, but I want to include tickets as well for the theme. And then I'm going to start uh, putting together my paper layers while my mixed media is drying. And I'm trying to cut down this little scalloped portion with enough of the color so that they will make sense with my mixed media. So I've got some teal at the top and then some more fuchsia-y pink down towards the bottom. And you'll actually see me trim this piece down a little bit later because I need to make a little bit more compact of a paper layering design so that I don't lose all of my mixed media entirely. And in fact, you'll see another boo-boo that I make later and uh, why watch me walk through fixing it. So at any rate, I am going to go ahead and distress the edges of all of this, much like is in the sketch. And I won't make you watch the whole process here, but at, I'm just going to try and find contrasting paper layers to layer up together. 
All right, after a little bit of time, I am back with the end of this layering process. And as you can see, I'm kind of creating a narrowing point, like in the sketch, to um, trickle all of my elements down towards the bottom of the page. And then I wanted a little more contrast between that main strip and the upper portion, which is true in the sketch as well. So I can see for sure why they did it. And I am back with my dried mixed media. And I'm going to show you something that went wrong with this mixed media in a little bit and uh, talk a little bit about that. All right, I have a whole bunch of embellishments that I have pre-chosen and set aside. I will not use nearly all of those. Um, I'm grabbing a couple extra supplies. I also cut some paper mats for my photos. And then I'm back with a clean sheet to protect my work surface as I well, work on the rest of this mixed media since my other sheet is wet. So I am going to water down this paste by a lot and really turn it into a watercolor paint. And it has some shimmer to it, so it has more interest than just a typical watercolor paint. And because it is super thick, I do want to wet my paper with that spray bottle first. And it was still too thick, so then I'm spraying some extra water into those puddles as we go. And I am loving how this effect is working out. So I will continue with that process as I go. And I'm just trying to fill in some random areas, leaving some space so that I can do the pink later on. And also knowing that this kind of teal color and the pink are going to combine into purple. So I need to give myself room for that to happen as well. Um, I am painting with that paste one of, of this embellishment, which is going to be my title because it had a very yellow background to it. And while my stars are gold, it kind of could work, but um, I wanted it to tie in more to the colors of my mixed media. So I'm just going to go ahead and paint that and let it dry. And since I used too much green there, you can see I have lots and lots of it on my leftovers on my pad there. I went very soft handed with my pink so that I could pull more out of the bin as I needed more and not waste the rest. Now I will certainly often um, uh, take a spare sheet of paper and sop up the extra mixed media supplies on something else to make, you know, random backgrounds for punching out shapes or whatnot, or even using as backgrounds for some other creation later. But uh, I try not to use more than I need when I can so that I don't have to worry about working on two projects at a time. Okay, with all of those colors in place to my satisfaction, I am going to go ahead and let it dry. And here is where my texture paste was doing something funny. Now, I haven't used this particular paste a lot, and I'm working on the Vicky Booten Mixed Media Paper, which has a little bit of coating to it, and I heated it a lot with my heat tool. So somewhere between those couple of uh, techniques that I had, it started lifting the texture paste. And I don't dislike it, but it did cause some seepage underneath. And as you can see, some of those stars were lifting up. I was really worried that they would not stay attached and fall off, but they're seeming pretty stable. And I actually kind of like some of the stars where they seeped under, um, some of them just seeped under around the edges and uh, gives it a very interesting darker um, outline to the star. So I kind of like how oh, that mistake turned out, as long as they don't fall off my project later. At any rate, you can see that I am just continuing this mixed media with some spatters and I will do all three colors, the gold, the teal, and the pink as well. And uh, that will finish up the mixed media. <laughs> I did have to clean up some surfaces here. Oh, and this is where I'm cutting down that paper that I mentioned before. But um, when you're doing spattering, make sure you protect all your things because I always get spatters everywhere. And uh, I just try to set my photos way off to the side because I know me and I know it's gonna go everywhere. I do it every time, even though I try not to. All right, here is where I'm getting my layer set up to go. And when I'm working on these, um, I'm, I'm trying to piece together this little piece here because I was too lazy to cut down another piece, even though it was sitting right there. And this probably took more time than actually cutting another piece, but yeah, no, sometimes that's how it goes. But as I'm fussing with that, I just wanted to say that as I'm starting to build up these layers, and you saw me do a test run on a totally dry piece of cardstock to kind of practice ahead of time. This is what I should have thought of is using some temporary adhesive to do that whole process because um, I'm 
making these very tight layers. And I did that because I wanted to be able to see plenty of the mixed media that's dripping down. So I wanted these layers to be nice and tight, but because my photos are bigger than what's in the sketch, I didn't really allow room for that. And so as I'm permanently gluing these paper layers down, I'm going to realize later that they are much too close together and that I'm gonna to have to rip them up and move them around and I, you'll see me do that. So stay tuned for that. All right, I am trying to keep that kind of point to this layering process that's in, in the um, inspiration. And I know because these layers are a lot of crinkles and wrinkles and, and uh, depth to them, I am going to have to pop up the edges of my photos with some foam adhesive. And in this case, I will double it up because this is a nice thick uh, textury layout so that those photos need to be lifted up on the top of them where the layout is much flatter. So a double layer of foam adhesive will do it. And after a little bit of tidying, this is the part where I start putting my photos into place and I'm realizing that I'm losing some of those layers. In fact, I'm losing a lot of the look of those layers. And while I could almost make that positioning work, I do decide to tear it apart and I go slow and careful, knowing that anything that tears underneath, I can always cover up with extra layers. I do have some more of this pattern paper if I do need to cut extra pieces. Um, and there's always plenty of scraps in my supplies. <laughs> this is where I realize, gee, I should be using some temporary adhesive, which I've been doing a lot lately. So I don't know why I didn't think of this, but brains, just brains. <laughs> so I am trying to stretch these out as much as possible, which means I'm going to make sure to add extra adhesive to, because I'm just adhering things at the very top. Um, I'm going to need to add more adhesive so that um, the bottom layers really sit flat so that you don't see the gap behind um, the almost too close layers back there. All right. And I'm just going to continue fixing that up. And when I've got all of that uh, where I think I can reasonably get it to go, I'm gonna bring my photos back in and that's a bit better. And so now you can see I bumped a piece and it just popped loose because the texture paste does not like to stick to simple adhesives. It really does need this glue. And you know, now that I'm saying it, that's probably why I didn't think about the temporary adhesive before because I knew I would have to be liquid gluing anyway. At any rate, you can temporary adhesive first. And then like me, once you get everything in place, then you can go back and add some dots of a liquid glue. All right, I started to glue that photo down and then I realized maybe I better get some of these other elements in there in case I wanted to tuck anything under the photo or around the photo. I wanted to make sure that that foam wasn't going to get in the way of tucking. So I, I do kind of set it off to the side and start working on other parts and knowing that I wanted to have my title on this particular tag, which matches the little trim there. Um, I wanted to get that all set to go so that when I do put my photos together, that title is going to overlapped both photos and I want it to be in a good position between both photos so that it's covering up some you know dead space in the photos and not covering up some important thing in the photos. So I've got the title block all ready to go and I'm feeling pretty confident at this point that I think I can make everything work now. So the first photo goes down and then I just I looked over at my um, tray of tools for something and I saw the stapler there and I thought hey there was some like uh, zigzag stitching on the inspiration piece and I'm gonna replicate that with some kind of x-shaped stapling. Um, I do have a sewing machine and I do enjoy sewing on my layouts but I was trying to finish this up quick because I needed to bring my kid to juggling. <laughs> so um, at any rate I'm gonna add a few more staples here and there and then I'm just gonna be tucking 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 all of these embellishments in there much like the inspiration did. Um, like I said I liked so many things about this inspiration layout. I will link you up again to the previous layout I did much along these lines and I just enjoyed this process so much. The multiple layers of the mixed media going on back there and the water coloring effect and even with all the kind of mistakes that were going on, um, some happy accidents and just soft gorgeous watery beautiful color it just makes me so happy are you are you that giddy over color i mean when i see an array of beautiful color i just get so happy 
All right, I've got a few word bits going on here and I'm covering up a tear in the paper. Like I said, if, if you're trying to peel things back up with this style of layout, you can always find something to cover up a mistake. So I did use one of those word bits to cover up another mistake. And then a couple last tiny little bits and that's gonna call it good. I do have a little date tab down there and a space for some journaling. Now, because this is part of a series of layouts, I don't feel like I need a lot of journaling on there. So I'm just gonna talk about one particular aspect of this show that was fun for me and my daughter. And then I will leave you with close-ups and hopefully you can see lots and lots of that color in the mixed media close-up shots as I leave you. I want to thank you so much for joining me today, especially if you're coming from another YouTuber's channel and you're hopping along. Welcome and thank you so much for being here. I love scrapbooking and I love mixed media. Hopefully you got that sense from me today. All right, I will be back on Sunday with an organizational video for you. So until then, have an artful day.